In a momentary calm, blades are sworn together, vowing to bring about the restoration of peace and order. The year is 190, and the Han Empire falters on the brink of destruction. Brought low by corrupt eunuchs, and strong-armed by the despot Dong Zhuo. The fires of war erupt across a once peaceful realm. In the growing chaos, rebellions rise, and the Emperor's voice is drowned out by the tyrant's roar. The land suffers. Yet though they band together against a common foe, such a fragile alliance cannot hold forever. Hello guys and welcome to Total War Three Kingdoms. It's great to finally be able to get my hands on this game. I unfortunately didn't receive an early access copy uh, from Creative Assembly so I went ahead and bought the game nonetheless and today I'm going to be bringing you a new campaign playing as Sun Jen. Honour others to honour yourself. Sun Jen has never shied away from opportunity. And despite his loyalties, the fall of the Imperial Court presents great opportunities. So Sun Jin, he is a stereotypical good guy and his faction works off heroism, which is their unique resource. The display of heroic leadership will inspire troops and people alike, yielding a great fortune for your realm. So heroism decreases unit recruitment and upkeep costs, the higher it is. Increases satisfaction of characters, the higher it is. And heroism is gained from inflicting more casualties than the enemy. So in battle, uh, the better you do, the more heroism you get when you win. And their playstyle focus is expansion, which is another reason that I chose to play Sun Jen. I really like the faction mechanics and I really like the playstyle. Uh, working off uh, expansion is really fun. It allows me to focus a lot on my military and uh, we get to focus even more on that due to their unique features which improve or include sorry, a lot of mercenary units. So they get mercenary captains, they get mercenary archers, mercenary infantry, mercenary cavalry and they can get mercenary outposts. Uh, they're noteworthy characters I think are all descendants of Sun Jen, uh, Sun Si, uh, Sun Quan and Sun Ren. Hopefully I'm pronouncing those correct. I'm going to pronounce a lot of things wrong in this game so please bear with me. Uh, his character specialization, he is a sentinel. Excels at locking down enemy generals or holding a choke point for a long period of time. Best grouped with a retinue of glaive infantry and melee infantry. Gets plus 25% campaign map movement range when starting in friendly sea regions and plus 10 morale when attacking, which is pretty legit. Let's go ahead and start the campaign. We are going to be playing on very hard campaign difficulty and legendary battle difficulty. Off we go. Embers rise, stark against the night. The tyrant Dong Zhuo wields the flames of destruction. Luo Yang burns. Chaos ignites as the power of the eunuchs is crushed. In the pyre, the hand falters. Yet hope endures in those brave enough to resist. Sun Jian puts the future of his family before his own. Bravery is strength. Let tyrants fear the tiger. China is in turmoil. The great empire of the Han, 
stretching back ages beyond counting, is being devoured by corruption. The yellow turbans, thousands strong, began raising their banners in rebellion and seizing commanderies across the realm. In response, generals loyal to the Emperor rose up and put down the rebellion. Yet despite the victory, the chaos only grew. With the corruption at the very heart of the Empire, the loyal generals stormed the Imperial Palace and killed the Ten Eunuchs, the source of China's ills. In the madness, the warlord Dong Zhuo seized the Emperor. With the great warrior Lu Bu at his side, None dared oppose him. In response to Dong Zhuo's brazen display, treason some call it, a coalition of warlords rose up, led by the charismatic Yuran Shao, to save the Han. Faced with united opposition, Dong Zhuo retreated west to his stronghold of Chang'an raising the old capital Luoyang to the ground as he fled. It is now the year 190 CE, and the coalition has all but collapsed. Warlords on all sides have seen opportunities to build their own fortunes from the chaos. Yellow turban remnants still stalk the lands, seeking the age of the yellow sky whilst soldiers of fortune feel the change of fate on the wind and strike out on their own. The scales shift and China hangs in the balance. The fire rises, my lord, and Luo Yang crumbles. Dong Zhuo! I vow you will see justice by my hand. He has moved west with the young emperor in his charge. He will leverage all the remaining hand power against us. Let him try. I have never shied away from a fight. Such zeal is admirable, my lord. But may I caution patience if we are to have victory. Perhaps Yan Shu can be relied upon to aid us. He has qualms with his brother, but I will take any noble friend in these dire times. As Master Sun says, the expert must seek his victory. I cannot throw away my shot. The tiger of Jian Dong must howl once more, my lord, so that all of China may hear the call. And here we are in the campaign. Very, very long intro, but that certainly sets the tone. Establish your power. Lord Sun Jen, you are far from home. It is time you returned south. The coalition is finished and the tyrant's wrath will soon be felt. So only from a strong position in the Southlands can you hope to weather the coming storm, then expand your influence. You must be wary. At Liao Bao, is aging but crafty, untrusty, untrustworthy, and all too close. Whilst Yuan Shao, or Xu, is ambitious but potentially useful. Let none stand in the way of your ambition. So secure the Southlands and be wary of Liao Bao and his vassals. With enemies encroaching, Sun Jian draws his blade. You have scored a great victory against the tyrant whilst the rest of the coalition languished. They are all but done now, yet your destiny is just beginning. There is a long way between you and your homeland, and enemies bar the way. Cut them down. Engage the enemy army, left click to select your army, then right click on the enemy force to initiate battle. And from this we gain taste of victory, which is extra military supplies faction wide and extra morale for three turns. The Jade Seal 
While moving through the land, something draws you to an old well. You peer over the edge and see a faint glint from the bottom. As you pull the rope up, a familiar shape raises out of the darkness. It is a beautiful seal of jade. It is the seal of the Emperor. And so regained Imperial Jade Seal for Sun Jian. Plus 10 authority, plus 25 prestige, faction-wide. I assume that's decent. Plus 8 satisfaction, faction-wide. And plus 6 morale when defending. That's only if the character is Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader. The symbol of Imperial Strength and Stability, but not its guarantor. Interesting. Alright, so here My is our army. And loyalty lies with China. Let me equip that particular item rejoice at the sight of crowds so we have our for weapons are china and all that we fight for. we have our armor and we have our mount i assume these are all unique and the best he can already get we have a follower that we can equip that would be plus two expertise probably not the best person to give this to since he's my general however we could give the imperial jade seal to him i think we will do that that will give him extra authority which improves satisfaction and unit morale it's only for his own retinue though so that's for all of the units to the right of his portrait i assume not quite sure how that works. There's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to have to work out. I have played through a little bit of this campaign on my own. Um, of Sinjin. I played like the first five, six turns. So I managed to like get through all the tutorial stuff. Which is why that's not popping up. But it may do later down the line when I get to new features that I haven't explored yet. So let's see. We need to attack this army. So that will be the first thing we do. Restore order. Right, it's definitely in our favour. We have way more men. 1,922 versus 961. But this will be a great opportunity to show off all of the in-game models that we are playing with and also our generals, of course. So let's start the battle. The wise general is the lord of destiny. He holds the nation's peace or peril in his hands. Brave warriors of the South, we hold the fate of China in our hands. We must forge onwards, as China can only know peace through bravery, honor, and loyalty. So for the most part, I think they have put general speeches in the loading screens. Ready. Here is our deployment phase. And these are our mercenary infantry. These are medium axe infantry. Then we have our axe band, which are light infantry. And then we have our G militia. At the back side, we have our arch militia. And then if we go over to our generals, they're sitting at the front. We can see Sun Jen here on his uh, wonderful mount with his uh, glass sword, I think it is. And then we have this fella, Huang Gai, who is, I guess, just a lancer of some sort. Either way, let's uh, just sort out our line. We're probably going to have to do something like this. Keep the halberds on the flanks with the infantry on in the middle. We've got medium axe infantry in between. That's fine. We can put our archers in front as well. And we will make that a control group. Lovely. Let's go. And one thing I do really like is how the infantry moves. In the sense that each line sort of moves individually. It looks really natural in the way that units charge and then they catch up to each other. Be 
The amount of flags they have, though, is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be a flag bearer. So I'm just going to move into archer range and then uh, we will let loose. Seems we potentially slightly outrange them. But I don't think we want to duel, there's no point. So their archers are behind their G militia. Which means my archer's going to hit their G militia. Which is what we're going to do. And I don't think their archers can fire back. So we should get plenty of free kills. And what I could do is potentially ask for a duel with their guy, with Sun Jin. Because Sun Jin is pretty ridiculously good. He doesn't want a duel. Okay. Well, we can automatically reject any duel rep proposals for our champion here because I don't really want him to fight. And um, well, meanwhile, the G militia are just getting absolutely wrecked here. Good old AI allowing us to muller their men. Look at some of these guys standing there with just arrows in them. <laughs> this guy's got two in the shoulders. So we'll make that three. How many have you killed? <laughs> Not enough, I think. Right, we're going to want to focus oh, their witty. archers now, how very witty. and uh, we're going to want to charge their infantry. The we're going to have my general attack running. their general. Okay, off we go. And my archers are taking quite a bit of damage. Know yourself, sir, but know the enemy more. And you will never be imperiled. Yes, I know. I'm not gonna lie, like Sun Jin, he does sound a bit of a a baby when he's uh, talking. Or decimated one of their archer units. Let's continue to chase them down. hitting each other. It's fine. Meanwhile, we're running them down here. I'll call these dead. And we did lose quite a few of our own archers. I think that's about it. Maybe some of our infantry units have taken a bit of damage as well. What's Sin Jin doing? Why is he not attacking? Right, their general's running away. That's fine. Let's just speed things up, since that should be victory. And hopefully we can just kill their general. Yep, he's dead. Lovely. Let's get some more kills for our general. Not sure if it increases experience at all. May as well. We can use the uh, Flames of the Phoenix, that increases splash damage. So we should do quite a lot of damage in melee with that. Yeah, never mind, it looks like they're at the edge of the battle map anyway. So we'll end the battle there. That was a quick look into what the combat is like. 
I feel like in Three Kingdoms, it's very rock, paper, scissor as compared to Warhammer 2, where Heaven, it's a bit different due to especially magic. So we lost 240, and they lost 736. We gained 8 heroism because of that. So I think best bet's probably just replenishment. 135 income isn't that much when we're already making 1,700. And 8 military supplies, I'm not exactly sure how significant an amount that is, but we'll take the replenishment for now. Just to top off our men a little bit. Because I've noticed in the turns that I have played, the replenishment takes forever. So it's going to be very important to improve on that. But yeah, so we get military supplies anyway from this mission success. Sun Jen rides home, but threats persist. The Southlands must be secured. To that end, the nearby region must be brought under your control. Yet, at the same time, be wary of Liao Bao. In this time of strife, any sign of weakness could be pounced upon by waiting warlords. Conquer the nearby settlement. Left-click your army, then right-click on the settlement to begin your attack. And from that we get three turns of plus five public order and extra faction support. Forest victory. Bonus experience, 1,750 for Zinjen. Now this victory is the first of many. I will prove my worth as everyone else falters. The coalition cannot stop the chaos, but I will show them that I can. So yeah, Zinjen was originally part of the uh, coalition that tried to stop uh, Zhongz Dongzhou. Um, but... Obviously, the coalition broke apart after he got defeated and pushed out the capital. Um, yeah, there we go. Let's cancel that, and I guess we'll continue on to the settlement. And we will demand their surrender. And, well, <laughs> it's simple as that. <laughs> they surrendered, and it is ours. So we can um, reduce the population and reduce the settlement level in order to get income and military supplies. Or we can occupy it. Obviously how much you do that depends on which option you choose. So second withdraw is like the equivalent of raising now I guess. I'm, I'm assuming that you cannot raise settlements anymore in this game. So we'll go ahead and occupy anyway. And that's going to give us the reward support from the people. Right, Sun Jen builds a future in the south. Your home in the southlands must prosper, my lord. Your settlements have room to grow, so you should nurture that growth. Develop the trade and commercial infrastructure around the rivers and watch as our prosperity grows. So to construct a building, left click on the settlement and select a building slot, then left click on the desired building. So construct or upgrade a building in Changsha Town. This will give us minus construction costs and extra and minus construction time. Establishing order. There is no telling where insurgency hides now. Every warlord thinks themselves an emperor now. I reclaim this city in the name of the Han. Okay, so this is where we need to build a building. We have a spare slot here, or we could upgrade the town to a large town. So that increases the population capacity, uh, the prestige. It also improves income as well as income from commerce by 25%. I think it does. Does it end? open up another building slot? No, it doesn't. It might be worth just building into here for now with the cash that we do have. If we go for land development, I think it's probably the best one. Say workshops gives us extra income from industry. Learning and market building construction cost costs minus 10%. Uh, government support costs 10 upkeep per turn but gives us extra food production and income from peasantry we already get uh, income from commerce so that's really what we want to improve then that upgrading this and getting a plus 25 percent income from commerce would give us just over an extra like 25 from this as well so we would get what an extra 50 
from upgrading this to a large town. And it's not that much more expensive than building one of these buildings. Like land development would give us plus 70 from peasant income and plus one food production and extra population growth, which is actually really nice. And the conscription gives us uh, minus population growth, but extra starting rank for all recruits and minus construction costs for government buildings. Then tax collection is extra income from peasantry, but reduces public order. And we're probably going to want to avoid that at all costs. So there we go. I think I'm actually just going to upgrade the town for now. And uh, does that complete our mission though? Construct or upgrade a building? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Um, these are our, all our messages on the left side here. Uh, we have ancillaries gained. Which we probably do want to give to some of our characters. So let's go through our characters a little bit. We'll go to details of this guy. Uh, we have given him the Imperial Jade Seal, which is fine. Uh, I think that's perfect for him. It does uh, almost max out his authority. Um, as for Huang Gai, is there anything better I can give him? He currently has a spear, which is uh, melee attack rate. Gives us expertise and instinct. This gives him extra resolve, which would probably max out his resolve. Extra general health and extra population growth for administered commandery. I mean, that doesn't really affect him in the army, so I'm not sure resolve's the best bet. Probably want one with uh, instinct. Maybe a glaive, actually. This just does give him expertise as well. But currently, he's not getting enough to give him any melee evasion. So it'd be better off just focusing on instinct, I think. And that gives him charge bonus as well. Um, it does give him... Actually, what's the damage like? That's 708 melee damage. Um, armor piercing, that is. Uh, whereas this is 678 normal melee damage and 304 armor piercing damage. So overall, I think the glaive does more damage. Early attack rate is the same. You just get that charge bonus. He actually gets charge bonus from his uh, hardened iron shell as well. I think it's probably a good idea actually to just change that to the glaive. All right, as for followers, he doesn't need that one. What about these? Uh, cunning. What does that give? Extra ammunition for retinue and extra military military supplies. This one is Instinct and Satisfaction. It's probably the best one. Just uh, give him extra Instinct, extra melee damage, and minus recruitment cost. Then he can actually uh, duel much better. So we'll give him that. Lovely. Alright, moving down, we have characters at court. We have Cheng Pu. Uh, what is he doing? The Legendary Sentinel. Oh, he's a legendary character. Okay. He is the finance advisor. Plus 15 satisfaction. How do I know which ones are commanding the city? Members of your court can be sent on assignments to benefit your faction. Examine the available assignments to see where you can improve. So I can tell him to supervise construction, which will reduce construction time, building upkeep, and construction cost. What does this one do? Plus 50% income from peasantry. And this guy gives us extra population growth and extra income from commerce. Uh, we could probably just assign Cheng Pu, right? Is that... Hmm... If we cancel this, we do the assignment. Does that make that cheaper? Or does he have to... Takes like one turn, right? It might be worth waiting. And then what I can also do with this guy is give him the builder. So that's another minus one construction time for the administered commandery. And then... We give him the satisfaction one. Cunning. Cunning's not really worth having for him. The satisfaction... Satisfaction is how 
content a character is with their current faction and situation. If it falls too low, they may choose to leave. Um, his satisfaction... Where is his satisfaction? I think maybe because he's a legendary character, he doesn't have a problem with that. Oh, we can actually increase his rank. He would be Chief Inspector. I guess that's just purely for satisfaction. Just trying to figure out where the satisfaction bar is. Ah, there we go. Satisfaction 44, 70. I guess he could do with a bit of satisfaction. Even if he doesn't benefit from the morale for militia units. That costs 1,600. Wow, okay. Um, yeah, construction is available at Changsha, but if we wait one turn, that will only take two turns anyway. So I think it's worth the wait, and it will also cost less. So we'll save some money. Uh, we are going to get 1,800 in the next turn. Um, it might be worth recruiting some more troops for our second character here, if we can. Uh, you will be able to recruit units next turn. Okay. Well, I think that's everything done then for this turn. Awesome. Next turn we'll spend our money. So we will put the money towards the upgrade. That saved us 200 and it's going to take three turns. So yeah, we didn't lose anything. I thought he would get even more. Maybe it doesn't stack. Or maybe I'm not correct in how it works with assigning a character. Anyway, uh, we should be able to construct something here as well. Or can we not do that at the same time as upgrading? It doesn't look like we can. Well, our public order is currently going up, which is nice. At uh, Jiangling. Shall we upgrade this as well? We currently have the land surveying office, which gives us peasantry income, and this gives us commerce income. Upgrading this town as well is probably not a bad idea. Because we will have the cash. It is heartening to be amongst my people again. Right, we can recruit now. It's good. I think I'm gonna grab some more archers. That will be okay for this turn. In the next turn, maybe we can get some we more. Must prepare strategies. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. And I'm going to leave it here, I think. It's been a nice little introduction to Total War Three Kingdoms. We've played a battle. We've looked into the campaign uh, quite a bit. And I'll go through more of the features as I continue the campaign and work them out for myself but until then hopefully you guys have enjoyed it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode goodbye